everyone, I am Dr. Archana. I am an assistant professor in epidemiology at the Institute of Liver and Biliary Sciences, New Delhi. Today, we are going to discuss an important topic, bias and confounding. In this lecture, in section A, I would be dealing with confounding. So, at the end of the session, I want each and every one of you to be able to define what a confounding factor is. Also, to distinguish between a confounding factor and a factor in the causal pathway. You must also know the important methods that are used to deal with confounding. Before we go into the lecture proper, I would like to tell you that whenever at the end of a study, you see that there is an association between an exposure factor, commonly a risk factor, and an outcome factor like a disease, this association that you have seen in your study could either be a true association or it could be because of certain random errors or it could be because of bias or confounding in your study. So unless and until you rule out random errors, bias and confounding, you cannot really be, see, you cannot really be sure that the association that you have observed is a true association or not. So let's first look at confounding. To begin with, what exactly is the definition of a confounder? In simple terms, confounding is a situation where an association between an exposure and a risk factor can be completely or partially explained by the presence of a third factor, which we call as a confounder. To put in simple terms, confounding offers alternative explanations for the effect that is seen in epidemiological studies. I am going to explain the concept of confounding using a hypothetical study where the researchers wanted to look at coffee drinking and its association with pancreatic cancer. The confounding factor that they wanted to see in this study is that of smoking. Let's go through one by one. So the study that the investigators are interested in involves an association between coffee drinking and pancreatic cancer. At the end of their study, the investigators found that a positive association exists between these two factors. But the real question is, is the association purely because of coffee drinking or could there be some confounding? Now, several studies have shown that coffee drinkers...